Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on weird and true mysterious stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Did you know you can support the channel by joining? Something to think about. Now onto the stories. Case file number 915, written by Give Me Warm. The glitch that almost cost me a fortune. Girlfriend and I were rabid poker fans. We routinely traveled to Vegas to get our game on and attend a few local events too. In our spare time, we practice with play money, as in a few hundred bucks, nothing critical, but enough to keep the blood pumping and the choices realistic. We're at the table with cold drinks. To be clear, we're both a little tipsy, but not drunk drunk. Make of that what you will. I'm dealing out the first two cards before the flop. We both examined them. I had ace three suited, spades, not the best, but not the worst either, straight potential. I'd raise here even before the flop, as I'm the big blind. My girlfriend loves pushing the ante when I'm the big blind. I deal out the flop, three community cards on the table for those who don't know Texas Hold'em. Ace of hearts, queen of spades, and king of spades. Very good flop for me, especially given that my girlfriend already raised me considerably before the flop. I know her moves, she probably has a mid-range pair if that. Here comes her bluff. Yep. I just call, I don't want to make my position too obvious. Flip to the turn, ace of diamonds. So I have a set of aces now, although it's a strong board potential for her too, but I'm not backing down. She bets, I call, river comes, ace of clubs, one of those exceedingly rare boards. But now I have four of a kind in aces. Hard to beat that, right? The best part, my girlfriend assumes I must be bluffing. There's no way I have the other ace, the ace of spades. I assume she thinks. Well, she bets high. I raise with no hesitation as she's trapped now, and I can see that twinkle of fear in her eyes. Adrenaline spiked, playing the Now you're probably wondering how I wound up here meme. Only, I look back at the board and what was the ace of hearts is now a two of hearts. The board now reads two of hearts, queen of spades, king of spades, ace of diamonds, and ace of clubs. My personal two cards are still the same, ace of spades and three of spades. I'm a lucky son of a gun because she folded after my large raise. Pretty sure she had me cooked with at least two pairs. It's rare she folds, but she had good instincts, and I wasn't actually bluffing, until technically I was because reality shifted the ace to a two. Girlfriend didn't act like that card changed, and I didn't exactly feel like bringing it up to her. I still haven't. Imagine that. Hey, honey, uh, did you also see the card on the table morph into an entirely different card? No, honey, but I found these divorce papers. <laughs> Case notes for file 915. The glitch that almost cost me a fortune. Well, hey, at least you have a pretty good sense of humor about this wild happening. It's most likely just a de-render, switch from a different universe. In that universe, you were there, playing cards the same way, but the first card revealed there was actually a two of hearts. This universe, it's the ace of hearts. Of course, it just switched at the end, which messes with your brain and your perception of flow of time, which not exactly ideal, object permanence and all that. I have to trust my memory. Don't worry, you can. This shouldn't happen all that frequently, unless the instability accelerates. We'll see. The other, of course, mundane explanation is that the alcohol had some effect. Probably not. I mean, maybe you could confuse an ace for a, a two of hearts. I'm not really the best person to ask regarding alcohol consumption and effects because I don't drink at all. In my life, I've had one shot of the, um, it was like a cinnamon -y alcohol with gold flecks in it. Gold Sugar, I think it's called. And all I did was apparently giggle at everything. So <laughs> I don't like losing inhibitions. I'm too stuck up for that. Case file number 916, written by Alfie Melmac. I was abducted by aliens. Whatever this was, it hit me over a decade ago. I've been able to recall most of the night's events through hypnotherapy. To be honest, I always thought this was bogus science and couldn't possibly work. Putting people under hypnosis is nothing like in the movies or TV, but if you open your mind up enough to fully relax, it really does work. The reason I even attempted this is at the persistent suggestion of family members after I told them about the blank day. I told them this years ago, soon after it happened. Again though, back then to me, it was nothing more than a missing day. I had gone to bed Wednesday, 
and woke up in bed Friday. No signs of ever having left my bed. Naturally, that's impossible, short of being in a coma. My boss had called me. I had a record of that phone and landline messages left. I lived alone, so there wasn't anybody to corroborate any weird happenings. All I knew was I skipped a day. I had medical checkups done, but everything came back clean. It's also important to note that I didn't have any unusual scars or bruises or implants. Since I wasn't some loony extraterrestrial theorist, I never requested to get checked for those things at all, but none of them were found. Wow, how times have changed. I'll now go over the fragments of information I've pieced together from my hypnosis sessions. Because I don't recall events in a chronological order, it can be challenging to construct a timeline that's coherent. There are two bigger chunks I can describe. I initially recall waking up to the fact that it was still dark outside. I never lower my blinds because the sun wakes me up naturally. I remember this feeling of anxiety at the time. The sun wasn't even close to rising. Not a sound, not a light to be seen. Then, abruptly, blinding white light appeared outside my windows, as though a switch had been flipped. It was very sudden. The light was exceedingly white, like what you'd find in a hospital hallway, but magnified a thousand times, and that's the key to what I remember. It is impossible to mistake this for sunlight. Disorienting is the only word for it. Well, terrifying too. There was no sound. It was only as that overused term can accurately present, deafening silence. That's all I remember up until I presume a long time later, because there was now sunlight outside. I remember still being in bed, but I was naked. I always sleep in pajamas, keeps my skin healthy. Who undressed me, or what, and for what? As I said before, there were no markings or bruises, scars or implants. Nothing was done to my body as far as anyone could tell. If this is an abduction by aliens, they certainly don't need to leave behind evidence that they examined a human body. But beyond knowing that I was naked and it was sunny out, I felt a weight on my chest. It's a bizarre thing to recollect. I could move my arms and legs but couldn't lift up my chest. That's all I got. Well, I also have a very short memory again for what I think is later in the timeline. It was still dark out. Who knows, it might be chronologically the first fragment. All I can remember from it is darkness and cold air. In every memory, I recall no sounds whatsoever. Maybe that's a failing of hypnotherapy? It's not perfect, but it's given me more than what I had. If anyone has suppressed memories they want to dig up, I recommend it. Although, at your own peril. Having this knowledge has not made me happier. I'm unsure of how to handle it. Does it imply that I was kidnapped or suffered a mental breakdown, taken to an alien ship and brought back? Which is it? Whatever it was, I believe my mind decided it was best to forget about it. And then the other part of my mind later on said, screw that, let's dig the terror back to the surface. Because yeah, that's my brain for you. Case notes for file 916. I was abducted by aliens. You know what really fascinates me most about aliens? Is that if they exist, it's direct evidence that there's more going on in the universe than we know, and that technology can advance far beyond what we have now. It's like in Civilization, if you've ever played that game, where you can advance in tech trees, and culture and all that. Well, it's not fun when you're right at the end and there's no more progress to be made, so just knowing that there's a lot of room for improvement is awesome. There's something to work towards. That's exciting to me. Now as far as hypnosis goes, I've heard it can work, but like you say, it's nothing like the movies or TV shows where someone can just put someone to sleep or make them jump on one leg or something like that, unless the person is fully open to the suggestion. It's more of enhanced suggestion than like magical hypnosis, mind control. So yeah, if you really have intent to make it work, you're sort of being guided along your own brain path. You can influence them, but no one can directly control it, which is pretty good. I'm glad that's the case. <laughs> But this does mean that deep down, inside your subconscious at least, you really did want to know more. And yeah, you say that it doesn't make you happier. That's fine. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to make you happier sometimes. It's the curse of knowledge, right? They say that the more knowledge you have, the more sorrow follows. In a certain sense, I think that's true. But we're still compelled to seek out and solve mysteries and just understand the world. Even if it doesn't necessarily make us happier, it makes us more complete, I think. And for me, the most interesting aspect is when you describe this heavy weight on your chest, 
but then in that memory, it was sunny out and you were naked. Maybe you were actually on an alien ship and they were projecting a more peaceful view for you. So you didn't panic. You could still move your arms and everything. So maybe it was just your chest that was compressed or something. Maybe you have some advanced scanner that they use. I don't know. Spitballing, but maybe. It wouldn't be surprising if they had advanced projection capabilities. I mean, hell, we're probably going to have holodeck soon enough. That's exciting. <laughs> Bonus file. Written by John the Man. The Translucent Force. I think I have to move. Let me explain. I'm a father of a beautiful wife, three children. Both my sons and one daughter have told me separately the same story. They wake up in the middle of the night, full of fear, and at the base of their bed they see a translucent shimmer in the shape of a human. Then yesterday, I saw it too. The best way to describe it is translucent yet with a ribbed edge like the edge of a puzzle where they all intersect together, but in 3D. You can tell the general shape, but that's about it. I have a camera in my room. It did not pick up this translucent thing, only myself bolting awake suddenly and then staring transfixed for several minutes in the same spot. It's unnerving mostly because from my memory it was only a few seconds before it faded away. Yeah, we have to get out. What the hell? Case notes for the bonus file. The translucent force. Yeah, I agree, get out. I mean, I know it's your home, and it's tough to move, but by what you're describing, I don't think there's an actual entity there. I think it's something making you witness this translucent entity. And the same thing for your kids. Maybe your wife hasn't seen it yet, but whatever it is, it seems like it's not intending anything good. You don't make other people see weird, terrifying entities if your intent is pure. Burn the rubber on the road. <laughs> and the end of my notes. Another day completed. More mysteries solved. Well, some are solved, some are unsolvable. But we'll see where they go.